Greetings and welcome back to Switch to Linux. So today we are going to have a look at my final cubes setup. Uh, once again, I'm going to do this uh, this video pointing the camera at the screen, so the video quality will not be as uh, as good. And the reason I'm doing it this way is because the time it would take me to record the audio, record the video, and overdub them. It takes a long time to do that because the screen recorder I have for cubes will not record audio. It will only record video, but the timing is not like the frame rate doesn't record out the same. And uh, I have too many other projects I need to work on uh, this evening to wrap that up. So uh, what I've done with my cubes installed, there's still a few more things I can do as a tutorial, such as maybe setting up uh, external virtual machines, etc. Um, but what I have done here is set up uh, I've set up my cubes platform here so that each one of my different channels and workflows has its own individual cube to keep things isolated. Um, I've also went in and created a Debian that has absolutely no social media tracking and connections capable. Um, outside of Google, I allowed Google just because I'm using uh, I'm using YouTube and um, just to make sure things are working right, I'm allowing the analytics in there. Um, other than the analytics and and the um, and the uh, uh, Google stuff. I've blocked all of the other social media except for one of the accounts, um, and uh, that's because my author stuff, where my author name is, actually I do have a Facebook uh, business Facebook page that goes with that stuff, albeit I don't use it much. But I did want to allow myself to use a uh, a Facebook account, so I created one Debian machine that is actually allowed to interact. Although I have have blocked a lot of the other. Um, more unscrupulous ad networks through that system. So uh, with that being said, what we're going to do here is I'm going to readjust the camera, point the camera directly at the screen, and I will walk you through what we have here. So here we are inside of the, the new cubes. And um, again, I apologize. I have to point the camera at it. I actually did attempt to record one utilizing the screen recorder. The problem is that the screen recorder... Uh, it records at the wrong frame rate for whatever reason, and I can't record an overdub without spending a long, long time getting stuff figured out. Let me uh, fix my uh, trapezoid there. Okay. So what we have here, uh, what I did to build this out is I created a new template called Debian 8 No Social for no social media. And um, the other thing that I did is you'll notice from the last video is I took out the Debian no ads because I copied the entire host file. Um, I went into the uh, terminal and I just copied the host file uh, into a document and just dispersed that throughout all of the other templates. And uh, so if I actually boot up the Debian 8, let me go ahead and pull that up, the Debian 8 terminal here. And I show you the host file, you'll see that it blocks all those ad networks that we put in, just pretty much every ad network that's out there, really. And then I also blocked Facebook, Twitter, Ask, Dictionary. Maybe I'll add some more eventually. Um, but uh, the, the only one that I took out of here is the Google, uh, just because the plan is to use this as a means, actually, to... Um, I want to use the system as a means to to be able to check and, and being able to update statuses on all of the different uh, all the different uh, YouTube channels and other whatever things I need to work with all those channels um, for uh, uh, for all of all of the different systems. But I wanted to keep things isolated so that I can stay logged into all of the different channels on their different cubes, but I can still have the isolated. Uh, the cube for the personal stuff, which is the one with my name, and the business one, which is the WMW. Um, but you'll see that I also have one for the home cooking channel, the Christian channel, the Linux channel, and then we still, of course, have the untrusted or the um, uh, or the uh, uh, Tor-based platform. Um, you'll also notice there are a lot of updates that I need to do here, and I simply haven't done the updates because I know when I update DOM zero, it's going to change the um, uh, it's going to change the uh, the 
uh, UEFI boot partition. And next time I do that update, I'm going to want to do a video on how to fix the UEFI uh, division uh, without uh, without having a system that allows you to do that. Because for whatever reason, I have the, the gigabit BIOS in here and you cannot manage the um, the uh, boot orders or boot, boot sequences uh, from within the BIOS, which is absolutely horrible. So actually I have to boot into... Uh, a terminal and uh, tell the computer what all the different systems are and it'll update my my uh, boot sectors and it just becomes some, some giant mess so next time I feel like doing that I'll do a video on how to fix the, <laughs> the boot record when I do that um, but to show you what I have here um, I'm gonna go up and boot up the different uh, uh, the different uh, uh, channels that I have here so I have one for my Christian stuff, one for the cooking, and one for the Linux. And what you will notice as you get in here, where's that at? There it is. Um, that uh, if I come over here to YouTube, it should be keeping me logged into all my different channels. So there are three different YouTube windows, and you'll notice that all my YouTube windows are logged in um there's the last one they're all logged into their respective uh respective channels so i can actually <laughs> partition these guys out in such a way that i can have all of my different channels open simultaneously so i could respond to any comments or uh do anything that i would need to do uh, it looks like they're really pushing that galaxy <laughs> say it aren't they um so I can keep logged into each of these guys having my own cubes and then I can even run my own personal Firefox uh, without, oop, I uh, just moved that to the wrong location. There we are, I think, there we go. So now I can run four completely different Firefox sessions and if I do, do a search over here, it won't do any tracking, not just like, if I do a search and I'm on Google doing the search, then um, of course it'll track what I'm doing. But if I do my basic search on start page, which uh, looks like I've not finalized uh, all of the search options on these guys yet. Maybe that's something I still need to do is this one's working. This one's start paged. I thought mo most of them were. This one's start page. So, okay, that's right. Because th these two here, I just didn't do much work with. This one, I just built the Christian one. Um, but um, if I can, you know, if I go over and, and do some search through Google, obviously they can keep track of what I'm doing. Uh, but that's not the biggest concern. The biggest concern is if I land on some web page, uh, landing on some web page would actually allow me, you know, would, would allow Google to, to keep track of things through the analytics codes and, and other things. Uh, what's going on as I track different things. But if I'm using a separate cube for all of my personal web browsing down here that's not linked to any of the other YouTube accounts, then it keeps a, a degree of separation away from, from all the other accounts. So this way I can do what I need to do, uh, but I can also have my own, uh, my own separate system that, that is really uh, prevented from, uh, from doing any of that other tracking stuff. Now, the other thing is my Christian channel is where I do the majority of my writing through and my authorship, I actually have a Facebook account linked. And so this upper cube up here actually does not block Facebook. So I can actually come up here and go into Facebook. And uh, when I do that, I can actually go right into my author page and do anything. Not that I actually do anything really on Facebook. But I do have the capability of, of using Facebook on the Christian channel without Facebook keeping track of what else I'm doing anywhere else. And uh, this way in cubes, I can also have my own uh, business one as well. So the WMW, this would actually allow me to have email isolated inside of each one of the different cubes. So if I want to have an email on the Linux channel that is not tied into any of the other channels, I can go into that individual cube and keep my emails isolated even though I want to use the same email application. 
So that's uh, the way that I have this set up. So it's just a, a very nice, uh, very nice way to keep things set up. It's good. It's productive. It's not the most modern looking system, but uh, as I as I do use uh, cubes for some other projects, it is a very very good system. Very nice uh, platform. It does keep that degree of isolation, that that security, not just in my perspective, preventing a virus being hit on one web browser from spreading anywhere else, but it also will prevent a lot of that cross browser traction that, that uh, we've been talking about here on this channel quite a bit. So that is kind of how I have my cubes set up. Um, the last thing I think I, I might want to do on cubes here is to show you how you can boot into um, another, like a, its own standalone virtual machine, kind of like running a virtual box. Um, and I think my other one, I actually have done that on Tails just to to try it out. And actually, I want to say that one of the protocols we have in the other uh, group that I do business with does require um, it does require transferring some data every now and again through a through a security protocol that is um, on Tails, but I don't have it installed on the other computer. So that enables me to boot into Tails to do anything from that own computer. Uh, without any real issues. So that is kind of how I have my uh, my personal cube set up. This is not the same cubes install that I have um, for the for the other business that I'm doing work with. But for this one right here, uh, this is a good personal way to keep things isolated. Of course, you know the whole disk is encrypted and and all that kind of stuff. So I could actually build yet another cube specifically for my banking stuff, which would be a good backup uh, to the uh, El Ubuntu that I have for, for the banking. So I might just duplicate some of the files left and right or, or whatever else. So um, that is just a real quick uh, wrap up here on, on cubes. Uh, what I have finally done to, uh, to keep this guy um, uh, working and up to shape and once again I apologize that the video doesn't have uh, you know have the the same quality I usually do but just getting a, a video recorder working on cubes itself like I can do screen caps I can quote unquote record video but the amount that it actually records is not in time with reality uh, in other words as I can load up uh, the record my desktop on cubes and then start a an audio recording and then try and sync them together on Caden Live, it doesn't work. <laughs> um, that it ends up that that the Cube's channel is just not. Uh, it doesn't keep keep time right. And so, uh, with all that being said, um, that is my final Cube's build. Um, you know, maybe I'll come in and do some tails. I don't know. It it depends. Um, if I uh, if I run out of things to do anywhere else, but anyway, uh, hopefully this has been been helpful. Gives you some ideas as to what you can do uh, with cubes, and uh, it really is a good way not just to keep things protected, but also just simply to isolate projects and workflows. Uh, it's really good for that. So with that, um, thanks for watching, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.